Hello and welcome to Rick's RC Flying Channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at a suspension system for aluminum landing gear. Okay, we're going to take a look at a suspension system that I use uh, for aluminum landing gear. Now, of course, when it comes to aluminum landing gear, uh, the quality of aluminum that is used uh, from model to model can really vary. Uh, typically, the aluminum is quite soft. It really bends easily. Of course, it comes in different thicknesses. And there are aluminum alloys that really resist bending or almost next impossible to, to bend depending on the thickness and alloy. However, that being said, typically most general sport aircraft or aluminum landing gear bends rather easily. Now, that being said, you know, if you typically come in and you do rather hard landing, the landing gear will bend itself out like that. And then you have to come back and then, you know, bend it back to your desired uh, shape. It'll even after repetitive landings, particularly if they're a little bit on the harder side, eventually the landing gear starts to, you know, take on a different shape and starts to flatten out. And again, you got to come back and bend it. And one of the other things about softer type aluminum uh, landing gear, because it can bend and flex so readily, that if you do come in and the landing's on the harder side, it'll flex out to, you know, about, you know, it could go that far, and then it wants to spring back, and of course, typically your aircraft bounces back in the air. Now, the, the suspension system that I use minimizes those uh, characteristics. Uh, I mean, even multi-million dollar landing gear on, you know, full-scale aircraft, you can always still bounce the airplane. Uh, however, that being said, the suspension system that I use uh, looks like this. And what I utilize is piano wire, which has, uh, you know, some interesting characteristics. Of course, you can pre-shape the piano wire and, you know, incorporate any bend you want in it, and it'll hold that. However, there is a point where piano wire will readily flex and return to its pre-shape. So, you know, it'll, you know, you obviously can exceed a certain angle, but generally you can take advantage of that characteristic where it can flex it and it'll spring right back. It won't go back the other, you know, opposite direction. It'll come back to its pre-shape. In saying that, this is pre-shaped piano wire. However, though, if I were to, you know, take it off the landing gear, this part here, I still can flex it and it'll want to spring back to its pre-shape. So utilizing that, what it does, and it's particularly useful on the softer type of landing gear. And you can make this uh, suspension system for any size landing gear just by scaling down the material sizes you're using. So in other words, by using this suspension system where the piano wire will want to return to its pre-shape. So if it's pre-shaped in here, that when you come in and it's rather hard landing, instead of flexing out this far, it'll only flex out to a certain point and then want to return automatically to its pre-shape. So by minimizing how far it flexes out and it absorbs the landing and, and doesn't have that much distance to spring back, it minimizes the tendency of the airplane to bounce back in the air. And um, I found it to be rather effective, uh, particularly when you use it on the softer type aluminum landing gear. And the nice thing is, no matter how hard you do the landing, it'll always come back to its preformed shape. And um, for example, like this is really heavy duty landing gear. It's for a fairly big airplane and it's you know reasonably heavy. Uh, this happens to be an aluminum alloy. It's a 6061, so, uh, you know, it's next, uh, very difficult to bend. As a matter of fact, if you want to shape this type of landing gear, you have to kneel it. It has to be heated and properly uh, treated. Uh, I do have a separate video. I'll provide it in the description, which shows you how to bend your own aluminum landing gear. Uh, and, and effectively uh, accomplish a permanent shape for it. Now, I've used this type of suspension system. I have an airplane that's 30 years old, and during that time I've done some my share of hard landings, but still to this day, that landing gear is exactly the same shape as it was when I installed it 30 years ago. 
because this suspension system, even though you can e even flex this uh, aluminum, it has that flexing characteristic, um, this piano wire ensures that it'll want to come back to its pre-shape. So it does work. Um, and like I said, it's particularly effective if you have airplanes with the softer landing gear. Now, in terms of sizing it, you can use it on any size of landing gear. What you would do is uh, use a smaller diameter piano wire. These posts, you would use smaller posts. Now, in the video, you'll see I happen to turn these on a lathe because I was, you know, looking for a particular size. However, this round bar of aluminum, you can purchase it in different diameters. So you can get it in a half inch, three eighths, quarter inch, whatever diameter you need. So, you, you know, you don't need a lathe and have to turn anything. Just simply cut uh, a small piece off to the post size you want. So obviously you would never use a post this big. You scale it right down. You use a thinner uh, piano wire and uh, incorporate, you know, the same design. So you drill a hole where the piano wire goes through. Piano wire is not attached in any way. It's just simply sitting through these holes. It doesn't move or anywhere because of the tension that's on it. And then what you do is you, at the one end of that post, you drill, tap, and cut threads. And of course, depending on the size you're working with, you use the appropriate size bolt. Could be 256, 440, whatever. And of course, uh, you can work met in metric sizes too. Now, you know, you don't have to go buy a big tap set or anything. A Dubro actually sells uh, where you can buy the matching set where you get the tap, which cuts the threads, and you can get the appropriate drill bit that you need uh, in order to cut those threads. Because if you use the wrong drill bit, uh, you know, you may not be able to cut the threads properly. And they're not that expensive. And as I said, they come in a set, so it's very convenient, no guesswork, and you buy it for the bolt size you need. So if you choose 256, they have that size. They also have metric sizes. And, you know, quite a few hobby shops carry it, and uh, I'm sure you can get it online as well. And, uh, you know, as far as drilling this out, if you have a drill press, well, of course, it makes it a bit easier. However, uh, I, I've had modelers that have made these uh, just using a hand drill. It's, uh, it's doable. So it's, uh, you know, it's not a magic bullet and, you know, you can still bounce an airplane. Uh, but that being said, though, uh, one thing for sure, it's going to keep its pre-shape. It'll absorb, uh, you know, high impact situations without flexing that much and snapping back and putting you airborne because it minimizes that flexing and absorbs that and then it has a shorter distance to recover. It doesn't have that same effect of putting you airborne again. So anyways, we'll uh, uh, have a look. It's a quick uh, video redemption of how, how this sort of came together. Now I'm using a uh, wire bender. It's a rather heavy duty one because the piano wire is a quarter inch. Although, uh, you know, benders do come in many different sizes and you can get them at the hobby shop. So, you know, depending on, you know, typically one eighth of an inch piano wire is often used in modeling. So you wouldn't need a bender quite as, uh, you know, heavy duty as this one. And I'm using already a preformed one that I have as a template, although I did measure and mark where the bends are, and I'm just double checking to get the right angles. Now I used the piano wire, which was longer than required, and after the bending, now I'm cutting it to the correct length. Now I'm simply drilling the holes out to accommodate the posts for the piano wire. And there's now two of them in each leg right in the center. Now I happen to be custom sizing my posts, but you could use the stock of uh, round gauges that the uh, aluminum comes in. Uh, the part to note is though that you will be drilling a hole at the end of it um, 
which will accommodate the uh, bolt to mount the post, which is uh, about to take place there now. And you could do that on a normal drill press or even with your hand drill if you don't even have a drill press. And now this is the hole which will accommodate the piano wire. Now, if you've never cut threads before, uh, what you do is you take your tap, hold it as straight as possible as you put it into the hole, slight downward pressure, and then turn about a quarter of a turn. As you do, back it off, as you can see here. Lubricate it with oil from time to time, and then as you turn it in, as soon as you feel some resistance, do a quarter of a turn and then back it off. And you keep doing this till you accomplish your thread. Now, if it happens to be a, you know, a fairly deep hole, you know, more than an inch or so, you would want to turn the tap out from time to time, clean the tap, and then re-enter the hole and continue cutting. Now, once you get the hang of this, being able to tap your own threads can be such a handy asset when you're model building. So once you've completed cutting the uh, threads, uh, clean the uh, tap itself, and then uh, you know you take your your post out and uh, just thread it back in. And you can do this a couple of times. We just want to clean the threads out, and we also want to check um, you know how they turned out, and uh, they feel real good. And we're going to turn it off and cut some more. So if you like the video, please select like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, I always welcome them. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.